Um, yeah, reintroducing E1 in Osmo BSC. Um, as most of you know, uh, we started originally with E1-based BTSs. Uh, actually, Dieter back there, uh, much to uh, his credit. Um, OpenBSC and later OsmoNetB started with the E1-based BTSs um, uh, as uh, the Avis interface towards uh, the, uh, the base station. Um, and until the NITB split, E1 support also remained present uh, and maintained in Osmo NITB. So we could have E1-based BTSs as well as uh, IP-based BTSs. Um, but even other code, uh, even the original Osmo BSC uh, implementing SCCP Lite uh, never had E1 BTS support uh, with double P, of course. Uh, apologies for the typos. Um, and uh, yeah, nobody looks at the slides until I say, oh, there's a typo. Um, <laughs> and also, since the new Osmo VSC is sort of a derivative of the original Osmo VSC, also it has no E1 BTS support. Um, and uh, which means now in the new split uh, NITB architecture, which is much closer to the GSM specs with all the individual elements of the network. Uh, we don't have the support for the original BTSs, which is, of course, uh, a bit of a, a, a bummer. So let's look at how things were actually looking in uh, the Classmic Osmo NITB setup uh, with uh, E1-based BTSs. We have uh, a BTS here attaching to an antenna providing the radio interface. We had an E1-T1 line with 64 kilobit uh, time slots uh, as a backhaul. And then we have the big box here called Osmo NITB, which had an E1 input module that uh, would provide a single time slot to what we call a sub-chain demultiplexer that uh, splits the 64 kilobit slot into 16-bit uh, uh, subslots, so we have four 16-bit subslots, and on each of those 16-bit subslots we could have a trow decoder, which would uh, parse the trow frames, which is the format of how voice is transmitted over these uh, subslots, um, and then uh, hand that to the MNCC interface. And on the MNCC interface we don't only have call control, but we also have the actual voice frames uh, called GSM TCHF frame. Uh, or it's also GSM EFR frame, and uh, depending on the codex, to which you attach an external PBX like LCR um, or uh, like other uh, PBX uh, type software. So that's the architecture that we had uh, back in there. And I said the important part is that the MNCC socket would handle both the signaling as well as the voice uh, in this uh, old setup. Now, uh, if we change to RTP, um, still with an E1-based BTS, basically the entire left-hand side stays the same, if we, I flip between those two slides. Uh, the only difference is that here we have RTP towards the external PBX, but still uh, we have an E1-based interface here, single time slot, uh, and uh, sub-chain demultiplexer with the four sub-slots, the trow decoder, and here we convert to RTP frames uh, for the voice on, on the right-hand side. And if we go the evolution even further, um, uh, that was basically with an IP-based BTS, such as a Nano BTS or Osmo BTS. We then have RTP frames even here on the Avis side. We have an RTP socket here in the NITB, uh, which goes to another RTP socket on the other side, which then goes to an external PBX. Um, uh, so the Osmo NITB would just run an RTP proxy, and that RTP proxy even was optional, so you could disable it, so the RTP basically goes directly uh, to the PBX. Uh, which is this picture where Osmo NITB only handles control, uh, call control messaging, but the RTP goes directly to whatever external application. That's sort of the latest step in, in user plane evolution on in, in Osmo NITB, um, which was sort of the, the uh, is, a, is a very common setup uh, before the NITB split. Now, uh, if we go to the post NITB uh, side uh, and we uh, look at this, uh, it looks uh, like this. Um, we have the BTS on the left-hand side, we have the signaling basically on the top of this diagram, we have RTP at the bottom. So the signaling, AVIS signaling goes to the BSC, and the BSC then uses MGCP to control a media gateway uh, uh, associated with it. We have the same over here at the MSC, which again uses MGCP to control another media gateway, and in the end we have an external PBX over here. So that's the, the post NITB split uh, um, architecture uh, that we have today, um, where 
the left and the right hand media gateway, as we have heard earlier today, can be merged into one. If you have a small network, uh, then you can run only a single media gateway here um, uh, to avoid having to run two instances of that, but that's the architecture. And this is all IP based. So now the question is how can we attach something E1 uh, like on the left hand side to this new network? Well, today we still cannot. But uh, uh, we have uh, uh, a well, very uh, uh, current uh, feature uh, ticket that we work on uh, to uh, reintroduce this support. And how would it look like? Well, basically here uh, in this, uh, we have IP-based uh, communication. And here we then have A1-based communication. So again, the signaling plane uses E1 uh, with RSL and OML and, of course, LabD inside. So uh, that terminates in Osmo BSC for the signaling plane. And then we have some other E1 time slots that would be opened uh, or attached to by Osmo Media Gateway, um, which can then convert from the, uh, can have the subchain demultiplexer from the 64K to the 16 kilobit sub slots, and then do the RTP conversion, like we did in the NITB before, but this functionality would then be in the Media Gateway. Um, and um, uh, for this to work, the E1 driver needs to support that a single span or a single line of E1 uh, can have time slots where um, the uh, RSL and OML time slot, uh, which is a LabD, well, sorry, LabD, not LabDM here actually, signaling um, goes into Osmo BSC on the upper half and that other time slots can be opened uh, by Osmo MGW at the bottom. With Dadi, that definitely works. Uh, that's the Digium uh, uh, E1 interface, a driver stack. Uh, with MISDN, I'm not entirely sure. I think it should also work, but uh, I would have to study the code again. But for Dadi, uh, definitely this is an architecture that can work. And um, uh, actually, the, the top part uh, should, in theory, still work, because none of that code in Osmo VSC has changed. Um, I don't think anyone has tried in a long time, but all the code is still there in libosmo avis to open the E1, and it's the same libosmo avis that's used by, by Osmo NITB. So the signaling plane should actually already work today, but what we need to introduce is this uh, opening E1 uh, time slots by Osmo MGW, uh, and then stacking the uh, subchain demultiplexer on it and converting to RTP frames. And this, of course, also will then affect the MGCP signaling here, because uh, if uh, you paid attention to uh, uh, Philip's talk earlier on, uh, basically right now we have uh, RTP bridge slash something as an endpoint name because we have RTP on, on, on the left and the right hand side. And now Osmo BSC then basically needs to use an endpoint name which encodes the line number and the time slot number and the sub slot number. So it would basically be, uh, okay, I don't have it here. Yeah, here at the bottoms would be something like E1 slash line 1 slash TS4 slash sub slot 2 at MGW. So the endpoint name basically here would differ from an RTP, uh, pure RTP IP based uh, BTS setup, um, but uh, the endpoint name has to change. And that's also actually rather simple uh, because the information what to put in here is already present in, in the Osmo BSC configuration file, or just like it was in the Osmo NITB configuration file. Because for every uh, radio interface time slot, you have to specify which E1 time slot and sub slot is mapped to that. Um, if you look at them, we can quickly open an example, uh, uh, I suppose, or quickly. Um, uh, um, an example config file and look at that. Um, let's make that huge. Um, uh, Examples. Nah. Osmo BSC. Ah, okay, so we don't have a, um, actually a config file here, but if you look at an old Osmo NITB. Let's say a BS11 example, uh, openbsc.cfg. So here you see, well, uh, set no spell. Uh, you see that for each uh, E1, uh, each radio time slot, uh, here at TCHF has a, has a voice channel, we actually already have this in the VTY. 
and, and this, this part actually is, is uh, already present in Osmo BSC, so this should even work today. We say time slot uh, 1, and this refers to the air interface time slot of this transceiver. We say E1 line 0, time slot 2, sub slot 1. And that's exactly the mapping which is then used um, by uh, the OML code to instruct the BTS to uh, connect those two. So in the BTS, it will basically do this connection from time slot 1 to a given uh, um, uh, air interface time slot 1 to a given E1 time slot and subslot. Um, and this information we need to recycle in Osmo BSC in order to send the MGCP commands here to the Osmo MGW to a given uh, MGCP endpoint. And once that is in place, uh, basically we are done. Um, and uh, the media gateway can then take these uh, audio frames from the E1 side and send it over RTP uh, in the rest of the network. So actually it's very little work uh, to add. And that was also the plan uh, with the new Osmo Media Gateway and with MGCP and the entire architecture that we can easily um, reintroduce the E1 uh, setup. Um, now, the question is, why would you do that? Well, of course, it's, uh, we, we, this is where we're coming from. So we have a historic uh, attachment, uh, of course, uh, or uh, legacy there. I don't think there are so many like actual real-world users of uh, Osmocom that still use E1-based BTSs. Nevertheless, uh, we have uh, plenty of them around. And uh, as we will see in a couple of the other talks uh, uh, following now, uh, there is uh, quite interesting hardware now, again, or still, actually more again, <laughs> available very inexpensively uh, with E1 interface uh, that uh, makes a, a low cost and very powerful um, BTS hardware that we can use with the Osmocom stack. So I think there is some new um, interest in E1 um, or new possibilities uh, in E1 if we reintroduce this. Um, also, it means that it's again one more user group that uh, we can uh, migrate from Osmo NITB to, to the new BSC and MSC architecture. Okay, that was it uh, for the uh, topic of reintroducing E1 and how that will look like. Um, if we do have questions, we should ask them by using a microphone. I'm um, not sure where it is. Uh, Kevin has it in the back. So if you can quickly grab that. So uh, y you were talking about uh, TCHF. What about TCHH? Or yeah, OK, so it was recorded. Um, well, it's fundamentally the same. Um, uh, so in, in, in the E1 uh, system, it's, uh, it, it works the same way. So every radio interface time slot is always connected to a, a subslot. Um, and uh, so whether you have AFR or EFR or AMR or, or half rate in there, you have these uh, subslots. And we do have already this code in place. Uh, so with a NITB, you can have a half-rate setup with a BS11. Um, uh, and uh, um, there's not really anything different. Um, uh, it's just you need to configure it. And of course, the, the, the trow frames, the, the frame format for the frame is different. But in Osmo NITB, we do have this for EFR, FR, and HR. We do not have AMR support for E1 BTSs in, uh, in Osmo NITB. Uh, that's because the BTSs that we were using f when we did this development, for example, the BS11 does not do AMR. It's, it's uh, too old to do AMR. But with uh, modern Ericsson BTS, for example, uh, we could, of course, also add a AMR support and complete that. But it's, it's basically parsing the, the trow frames for AMR and converting them to the uh, AMR payload format that we have in RTP and vice versa. So it's again some bit uh, shifting and, and uh, uh, interposing. Um, and then we have that too. Um, in the previous implementation, I mean, I don't know at all the interface um, from the process to the actual E1 card. Mm -hmm. But it's not a problem to have two different processes having to uh, connect to the same. Um, that's uh, what I mentioned basically here. 
is that the driver needs to support that a single line, uh, one time slot can be open by one process and another time slot can be open by another process. And for Dadi, for the Digium-based uh, interface, that definitely works because every time slot is a separate device node that you open as a file, so it's very easy. Uh, actually, yeah, you can just open TS1 from one process and TS2 from another process. Um, for MISDN-based cards, I'm not sure. I w I, I've forgotten how the uh, detailed interface looks like. I know it's. A, I still remember it's sort of socket-based uh, interface um, that they implemented. Um, so you have like an uh, AF MISDN socket uh, that you talk to. Um, and I don't remember whether it was one socket per time slot or not. So there might be some uh, difficulties there. But uh, I think even if we only have Dadi card support, which is the much more common... Uh, so for MISDN, I think the only cards you can find uh, is uh, for E1 is HFC E1-based cards, uh, which are for PCI slots. And I think even for 5-volt PCI slots and not for 3.3-volt PCI slots or so. Uh, no PCIe cards whatsoever, so it's rather difficult to attach them, uh, those cards. But Dadi, you get PCIe, low-profile uh, cards and whatnot. Uh, so I think it's uh, if we have Dadi support, uh, I would already be happy. I don't think... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, but uh, I I would expect also to to be able to do this from MISDN. I just don't know. Um, I just don't know. Okay. Any other questions? Good. Uh, then uh, that concludes uh, this talk.